Good morning, everybody. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and uh, I'm here with a cast of thousands to talk about uh, the New Rochelle Family Court, which is uh, uh, hopefully a, a major step forward on a long process uh, that has been, uh, been out there for almost a decade, almost a full decade. Uh, we're going to talk about this issue first. We have some speakers. Uh, whenever, when this is uh, completed, we'll take questions as a group. And then if you want to interview any of the individuals one-on-one, -on -one, you're welcome to do that. If you have any other issues on any other issue, I'm happy to address them after we complete that portion of the program and we can let our guests go and then uh, whatever else may be on your mind, we'll, we'll try to answer it straightforwardly. Uh, we're joined today by our Deputy County Executive, Ken Jenkins. Uh, we're joined by uh, two members of the Westchester County Board of Legislators, Terry Clemens and Damon Marr, both of whom are New Rochelle residents and represents districts that include New Rochelle. Uh, we're joined as well by uh, Kathy Davidson, who is the Chief Administrative Judge for the Ninth Judicial District, the five-county region that we live in, and we're very honored to have Judge Davidson with us here today. She will be one of the speakers. Uh, we have uh, individuals who are involved in uh, the development group that is uh, building this building. We have uh, Joe Simone, who's president of Simone Development. We'll be hearing from Joe uh, in a few minutes. We have Mark Stagg, uh, who is also part of this uh, consortium uh, of individuals. Uh, the mayor of New Rochelle, Noam Bramson, is with us, and he will be addressing us uh, for a second. Uh, and uh, we have representatives from a variety of different other uh, entities here with us today. We're joined by our county attorney, John Nona, who will give me the high side if I say something that I shouldn't say. And Catherine Chaffee, our director of communications. Bridget Gibbons, our director of economic development. Uh, I also want to highlight that the city manager for New Rochelle, Chuck Strom, is here. And a city activist, James O'Toole, who was uh, very influential in, uh, in the process that you go through. We'll talk a little bit about the process that we went through, but James had a role to play in his outreach to me, and I appreciated it very much. We also have Sherilyn Pulver, who's with us here, uh, one of the senior uh, managers in our uh, Department of Probation, and we're very happy to have her here. She has prior service as a, a lawyer representing uh, clients for legal aid and uh, involved in uh, issues that come before this court and, and so many other people here. We could go through the whole room. Uh, from time to time, we'll have a chance to uh, address them as we, as we do elements of this. Um, I wanted to highlight that, that this event today is about what is happening in the New Rochelle Family Court, but it's also about a larger narrative. And, and I want to make sure we, we know what that narrative is. Just uh, since the first of this year, I'm not going to go back through things that happened in uh, 2018 that also fit this narrative. We saw a number of different issues that had to be resolved as our still relatively new administration took office and as we dealt with the Board of Legislators, which has joint responsibility for decision making on most of these issues. Ben Boykin, the chairman of the Board of Legislators, wishes he could be with us today, but he has uh, prior commitments downstairs uh, in his responsibilities running the Board of Legislators. And in fact, both Damon and Terry have had to take a little time away to be with us today. We appreciate them from doing that. Uh, but um, since the first of the year, we've had a variety of press conferences. You've covered some of them, uh, if not all of them, where we announced uh, agreement on uh, the leasing of uh, 60 acres of land, county-owned land, to the Ferrari Associates Development Group in the North 60 project. Long discussed, long debated. We signed that arrangement earlier this year. This year we had a press conference just about a month ago where we announced the reestablishment of the Community Development Block Grant Program, a program that had been discontinued in Westchester for over five years because of the disagreements that we had had with the housing, the federal housing and urban development uh, entity. Uh, and this is a good weekend to be able to announce this, but uh, we did a few weeks ago announce the reopening of uh, the Sprain Ridge uh, activities pool and the impending opening of the competition pool. And on a weekend like we just went through, we're very happy that that pool was open to serve young people in Yonkers and Greenberg and Scarsdale, wherever they came from. Uh, we've been down at Playland to announce a number of different innovative things, arts on the boardwalk, uh, an announcement of a new ride, which will be the subject of probably our next press conference once we have a name for it, which I guess we're getting close to. Uh, and uh, other things down at Playland that moved us forward there. We've given you update reports on West Help, which is a project that for 20 years housed homeless, housed homeless and then went for six or seven years laying fallow in Greenberg, right outside the gates of the community college, and now will be repurposed with a, with a use for senior housing. And the Miller House, which was at the state of uh, practical collapse, which is now being uh, uh, fixed, and we expect to open in October for purposes. All of those issues were issues that not just for a year or two, but for five or six or seven years were unresolved, for whatever the reason. We're not here to, uh, to, to regurgitate past situations, but we are here to say in every one of those issues and in the issue we have here today, it took difficult effort, but we have reached a point of resolution. 
we've reached a point of progress. We've reached a point where we now can say, in this particular case to Judge Davidson and the Office of Court Administration, the county has done its job in making sure that a facility that's long been needed will come to pass under the, under the direction that, that you have given us. And that's an important narrative because so much of what happens in government, people feel cynical about. They think that government doesn't respond, government doesn't care, people don't understand, politicians are all, all crooked, we live in a bubble, we don't understand in the real world what's happening. And that's not to say it's not true in certain cases, but in this particular case with the issues I've just mentioned, other issues that go back a year ago, some of the issues where we've lobbied for revenue from Albany or for Penn uh, Station access on the east side of this county, we're showing a diligence to solve problems. And it's not easy to do things like this deal. This took a while because it was complicated, because it involved uh, the county having a responsibility through OCA, but at the same time a fiscal responsibility. And, and we have to work through the practical realities of development. And the practical realities of development are things that men like Joe Simone and Mark Fonte deal with every day, and it's not easy to do any project under any circumstances. That the city of New Rochelle, which has local uh, land use regulatory responsibilities, they can't just waive those oversight uh, responsibilities because this is a county-owned facility, or uh, pardon me, a county operating with a county and a state function. So it's a complicated process, but the important message here, the overriding narrative, is that we got through to the finish line again to prove our commitment. And we are joined by Chairman Ben Boykin. Ben, please come on up here and join us. I just made your apologies and excuses, and we're glad that you could extricate yourself. So, but um, uh, as we have our discussion today, functionally, what have we done? We've agreed to a lease on a building that will be newly constructed to serve the people of Westchester for family court purposes. The decision was made a number of years ago that, that the kind of cases that come before the family court, separate from the criminal cases that come before the county court or civil cases that come before the state Supreme Court, because the family court cases involve individuals and in families in very difficult sets of circumstances, that it was the right strategy to regionalize court presence in different parts of the county. And we have a county court, pardon me, we have a family court function in White Plains, and we have one in Yonkers, and we have historically had one in New Rochelle. Someday when we hit the jackpot, we'll talk about Austin Peekskill, because I think that's long overdue in my opinion. <laughs> and uh, once we do that, the guys from Mount Kisco will want to know what's up with that. Uh, we're joined by Catherine Borgia, uh, county legislator, head of the Budget and Appropriations Committee. Catherine, come on up here, stand up here with the rest of us. You know. Help make, the, help make the picture look better when they give us the group shot. Uh, but, for today, <laughs> but for today, the mission was uh, to make sure that we had an, act, uh, uh, an appropriate functioning court in the borders of the city of New Rochelle. And we made a decision a long time ago that we wanted that presence to stay in New Rochelle. I was a state legislator at the time, Mayor Bramson, Assemblywoman Amy Paulin, then County Legislator Jim Maisano, a number of us got together to argue that we wanted to maintain that presence in New Rochelle. We felt it was essential not only for the people of New Rochelle, but for the people of Mount Vernon that would have a much easier time of transport between Mount Vernon and New Rochelle. There's so many routes that connect those two communities that would make it more uh, functional for Mount Vernon people, and of course Pelham, which is the inter intermediate community, to, uh, to reach their services in New Rochelle at a regional function. The location that we had uh, and still have to this day at 420 North Avenue was a location that was not one that could uh, work for the long term. The owner of the building has other intentions for the use of the building other than family court presence. Uh, our executive team, Joan McDonald, who's just joined us, uh, our director of operations, Ken Jenkins, myself and a few others, journeyed out to uh, Long Island City to meet with the owner of 420 to, to do our best to impress upon him how important it was for him to help us bridge the time gap between where we were today and building a new building. And, and we found Mr. Valiotis nothing but gracious and understanding of our need and willing to work with us in a positive fashion. And I think the fact that we, we were uh, of the proper mind to go out and reach out to him and not expect you know, the mountain to come to us was, uh, was an appropriate step in this process. But we knew that 420 North Avenue would not work. Uh, the court was very clear on that. Damon was in there for some reason and, and gave us a blistering report of what his experience was like. We knew that we had to do something different. We also knew that the location in the city of New Rochelle was essential. And the location was complicated by the fact that the basic needs for the court require a significant amount of square footage on a single level so that the court and some of the ancillary functions could be accessed easily. And it is not easy to find 
32,000 square feet, 35,000 square feet in one particular circumstance. You can look at many office buildings and say you could take a couple of floors in that building, but no one floor would have enough of that square footage necessary for the court to function properly. And Gary Friedman, who's with us here, our director of real estate, diligently looked high and low all across New Rochelle. We took advice from a host of sources. City Hall gave us some uh, possible recommendations. Uh, New Rochelle's a city I drive through a lot. I drive up and down. I park the car. I'd get out. 9.30 at night. Could that make it? No, no that won't make it. We hear that uh, a building closed, no longer using that function on Quaker Ridge Road. Let's drive over there and see if that works. We looked at innumerable sites, and Gary led the charge on this. And at the end of the day, we were limited in the number of sites. I think we found two existing sites that were workable from a geographic, uh, from a standpoint of size and space, uh, and, and they weren't necessarily available to us. Uh, and then we ultimately settled on new construction. And the site that, uh, that uh, Joe Simone will talk about in a second is uh, right on Garden Street. It's in the heart of New Rochelle. It is a very short walk from the bus station, a short walk from the train station. It is more accessible to those two mass transit arms than our current location at 420 North Avenue is. And uh, to have a location that has the right geography and uh, through the design work that's being done, the right size and space for this court is important. I, I tend to doubt at age 65 that I will be around 30 years from today. What we're signing today, uh, what we have signed, we agreed to do it, has been approved by the Board of Legislators, it's a 30-year arrangement. And I've talked at times about committing things over a long period of time and when it makes sense to do that and when it doesn't make sense to do it. In this particular case, a 30-year commitment makes sense. We amortize out the cost of the building with the long-term lease that the owners now can see a revenue stream and upon that they can construct the building that they intend with us as a, as a main tenant and then other uses uh, of that complex. Uh, it also represents us giving stability to the court system and to the people that access the court, that they have a facility that when it's open will be state of the art and it will be there over time. And it doesn't matter if I'm here for 30 years, it matters that the court is there for 30 years. That is our commitment. Our time in office is limited. We've been given uh, uh, an authority for four years of which we've spent a year and a half of already. Whether or not we have any more time, I don't know. But what I do know is that with every one of these issues, from CDBG to North 60 to West Help to Miller House to the Sprange Ridge Pools to Playland, we're committed to trying to solve the problems that we face as we walk in the door and to try to have a practical resolution. And if we're not for the work of the people I mentioned and more, we wouldn't be here today. It, it, it is not a one-person show. And the conversations that I've had from Jim and Chuck uh, and people in the community through the work of these professionals and the sub legislative support, we've been joined by Catherine Parker, a majority leader of the Board of Legislators, who also represents a portion of New Rochelle. It is that joint effort that brings us to today. So let me now ask uh, Judge uh, Kathy Davidson to uh, uh, speak to us. And Kathy, thank you in the Office of Court Administration from uh, uh, Judge Janeth DeFiori all the way down the line. Thank you for your understanding and your patience with us and your uh, persistence with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good morning. This is indeed a, a, great, a great day, not only for the court system and everyone present here today, but also for the residents of New Rochelle, Mount Vernon, Pelham, which the courthouse serves. When I became a judge over 15 years ago, there was a report that was issued that said there were two of the worst courthouses in the state. One was Yonkers and one was New Rochelle. So to say this was a long time coming and took patience, that's small words to say. But in a bigger picture, as many of you know, the, our Chief Judge Janet DeFiori has an excellent initiative. And not only does an excellent initiative address the issues of moving cases through the courthouse, ensuring that justice is served from the least to the, to the highest, if you want to look at it that way. It also talks about, if many of you know about her, how do you house? What does it look like where you actually have your cases or how you do your work? And so this is keeping in line to really speak to those residents that will use the family court. And having practiced in family court for over 30 years, I can tell you it's really the least of our society to have the difficulties in terms of their economic needs, their everyday initiatives, and also this the youth, youth that come before the court. And it makes a statement to say that we'll have a state-of-the-art facility a facility that matches at what we believe in them and that we believe that by coming to a courthouse where you're seen with respect, to coming into a courthouse we believe that you're valued, to coming to a courthouse with, courts, with judges who are trained and believe, and that you have a community, a community that's represented in this, uh, before me and behind me that believes in you. And I can tell you as speaking to young people and speaking to young people from my judicial career and also my legal career, it makes a difference. So I want to thank you on behalf of the families, the youth, Thank you for making a difference in their lives today. 
And a special thank you to the Office of Court Administration and our Chief Administrative, uh, our, Administ our Chief Judge, Janet DeFiore, also believes in the dream and the vision of treating everyone with respect. Thank you. And I want to highlight that Judge Davidson uh, uh, led a team that included Judge Marks and Judge Kokoma, and we thank them as well for their assistance throughout this process. Uh, when I was a little boy, I remember having an erector set, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Some people may have had Legos, same basic idea where you build things as a kid. And it's fun because you can build them, and then you can take them down, and it doesn't cost you anything, and it's, it's an enjoyment. It's a lot different in the real world. Uh, our next speaker, Joe Simone, has built some very impressive buildings throughout the, uh, the metropolitan area. You see his handiwork on 287 uh, when you're coming from the east to the west and you look out to the right of the car. You see his work in Yonkers with a major repurposing of the Boyce Thompson facility. You've seen his work down in uh, the Bronx as you head toward uh, the Whitestone Bridge off to the right, a major complex uh, off of the hutch. Uh, he is uh, uh, he is a master builder, and, and along with the partnership that he has with uh, Mark Fonte and their group uh, will be the builders of this facility. And uh, I'm proud to say uh, we were childhood friends. I actually knew his older brother a little better. But we were childhood friends in Mount Vernon. It's always nice when Mount Vernon boys get together and go on to success. So Joe Simone, please, if you would. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, George. All of us at uh, Simone Development as well as Mark Fonte, Mark Stagg, and the entire Stagg Group are very happy to be part of this exciting new project in downtown New Rochelle. And for this opportunity to join up with the Stagg Group in creating a long-awaited new and expanded home for the county's uh, family court. I'd really like to thank now uh, County Executive George Latimer, and I certainly hope you are around in 30 years, <laughs> and you're not going anywhere, uh, as well as uh, Deputy County Executive Ken Jenkins, New Rochelle Mayor Noam, Noam Branson, uh, um, County Real Estate Director Gary Friedman, who probably should get combat pay, which I said earlier, for doing a deal like this. These deals are not simple. This is a 30-year deal. Uh, <laughs> and it's quite complicated. Uh, I want to also thank uh, New Rochelle Commissioner of Development, Louise uh, Aragon, as well as uh, City Manager Chuck Strom, uh, and every one of the many people in the community, county and city government, that had a hand in the site selection process and the planning for this exciting new development. Uh, Simone Development and the Stag Group have had a very long history of successful commercial, mixed use, health care and retail development projects in New Rochelle and throughout Westchester County. And we are honored to have been selected for the, for the creation of this much needed new court facility for the people of Westchester County. We look forward to working with the county, the city of New Rochelle, the court and the business community to create a facility worthy of the Queen City of the Sound and serving as an integral part of a revitalized downtown for years to come. So thank you very much. Thank you, Joe, and thank you, Mark Stagg, as well, for a tremendous effort in all of these things. It means very much to us. Uh, since the chair of the board has joined us, I'd like for him to share a few words. Uh, the group of legislators that you see here, Legislator Parker, Legislator Borgia, uh, Legislators Marr and uh, Clements as well, and then other legislators who couldn't be here today, went through a very painstaking <coughs> process to review this lease. And uh, it, is, uh, it is an experience I went through when I was a legislator. Now that I'm on the ninth floor, not the eighth floor, you do get a little impatient. You drum your fingers <laughs> against the thing. What's going on down on the eighth floor? It's funny how your perspective changes. <laughs> But um, uh, the bottom line is that the Board of Legislators did their constitutional response, their charter responsibility, they did it diligently. They asked questions that improved this lease, made changes, and added to the quality of the end product. So uh, Chairman Boykin, please share a few thoughts and on behalf of any of your other colleagues. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, County Executive Latimer. Yes, the Board approved this unanimous. That's an outstanding feat to be able to do this. And as you see standing with me is Majority Leader Parker, 
Legislator Terry Clemens, Legislator um, Damon Marr, Legislator uh, oh, okay, Catherine Boyer. Uh, it came before three of our board committees, law and major contracts, public works, and budget and appropriations. And we all bore down deep into the lease, going painstakingly with the law department. Tammy Ashur is here, going through it page by page. Then having to go back to the developer and go through that, coming back, looking at the changes that we made. Again, going through it, making sure that we made the changes that we thought were appropriate for the county and to make this lease work for us for the 30 years that we'll be there. We'll be able to keep the family court in New Rochelle. That's very important. We can't stay at our existing location, so we have to move. But we wanted to make sure that each and every day there was a family court in the city of New Rochelle. So I want to personally thank the Board of Legislators for, number one, going through it in tremendous detail and then unanimously approving this 30-year lease. It will be a new 35,000-foot facility. It will be right across from public transportation. There's going to be other developments and changes taking place in that area. Mayor Brampson and I know about it. I, I, say it, I go to New Rochelle quite often, and I see what's happening in New Rochelle. So that will be very important. I know that legislator uh, Lyndon Williams, who heads our Law and Major Contracts Committee, was very Im involved and thoughtful about the transportation and how will people get there with family, to the family court. And how will they leave that? We'll probably have to make changes to have a beeline bus to make it happen. But we will do that. So I'm very pleased to say that we approved this. We worked expeditiously to get this done because we know that we need to be out of our current facilities in, two, in about two years. And we need to go and start working and getting the project built so that we were able to, to be able to move into this family court in two years. Now I'd like to turn it to all the legislators that like to say something about this very important family court lease for New Rochelle. Uh, I just want to say very quickly, I really uh, appreciate on behalf of the residents of New Rochelle, uh, Pelham, and also Mount Vernon, the hard work that my fellow legislators have done. This has taken place long before I got on the board. This is something that needs to be done for a long time. And especially, we're very happy as residents of New Rochelle that the court will remain there. Thank you. And I uh, just want to thank the uh, county executive and the deputy county executive uh, for personal commitment they made uh, to keep the family court basically forever as far as we're concerned in our mortal lives um, and and to make it a bonus is it's a state-of-the-art facility and um, very strange hearings we had in which I'm, I'm the bicycle advocate and I was the first one to ask about parking plenty of parking it's going to be it's going to be uh, fantastic and you know I, I can't say enough about the deputy county attorney Tammy Sh Altshuler who was involved because she had a situation where she had it was she had eight lawyers in the room going over every single line why can't we do this why can't you go back uh, with that it, it's sort of like having uh, eight senior partners in a law firm that you had to deal with so you know really a, a great team effort and thank you I'll be very brief, but before I was on the Board of Legislators, I was on my local city council. And wouldn't you know, one of the things that we were uh, deliberating over was building a new court facility. They don't come cheap. The Office of Court Administration has a lot that uh, goes into creating a new space. So I, I really have to say, um, this is a win-win for everybody in Westchester. It's a win-win for everybody along the Sound Shore because we've got, we're going to get a state-of-the-art facility. And in addition to it being the home of the family court, we're also going to have the Office of Women. We're also going to have the probation department. It's really a, a, a wonderful, wonderful um, uh, feat that has happened with uh, the work of many, many people. Um, and so again, my thanks to uh, the administration and to our, our colleagues at the, in New Rochelle for working with us so that we can make this happen. Thank you. Uh, 
long before I was an elected official, I actually was a volunteer reading to um, children when their um, parents were in family court for various reasons. And I know the importance of, at a time that's very stressful in people's lives, to have a facility that is safe, that is secure, that it is, uh, you know, even though you're going there for difficult reasons, typically, that the experience is as good as it can possibly be. So I really applaud uh, everyone involved in this, in this, um, making this come to fruition. We've known for a long time that we've needed to do this uh, under the auspices of our administrative judge. Um, I think we have done a very good thing for the people of Westchester County, although I will say now <laughs> the northern part of the county maybe deserves a little bit of attention. So <laughs> onward to the next thing. I hope it doesn't take as long. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Catherine, that's our next meeting since we're on the same page, but uh, we're going to have to. F um, uh, as was mentioned already, I intended before bringing on Mayor Bramson to recognize the role that the county attorney's office uh, performed in this process. When you look at any of these processes, we've talked about what it will take uh, the developer to, to bring this product to marketplace. It's going to take uh, a financing partner. It's going to take all of the engineering work that will make sure that the, uh, that, that the construction will go smoothly. There, there's a title search, for, there's a host of different things to happen to, to put the parcel together and then, and then when they go through the actual construction, there'll be problems any single day with electrical, uh, uh, sewerage, a host of different things that are going to happen before this building opens. There'll be a groundbreaking with all smiles and we'll do the proverbial shovel and then heavy duty work becomes uh, necessary before it comes in. But the legislative work, the judicial work, all of those things are critical. And the legal work that went into this was, was extremely important. And on our side of the equation, John Nona and Tammy Outschiller uh, really did a fantastic job. I am not a lawyer by profession any more than I am a developer, any more than I am an expert in land use situations. And that's why when, almost like you're a coach on the sideline and you watch how well your cornerback performs, how well your place kicker performs, how well your quarterback performs, it's all of those things that get you into a Super Bowl successfully. But uh, I also believe in crediting people who do the actual work. This is not a faceless government. This is a government full of people who are committed to public service. Tammy is one of those people, and Tammy, we owe you a debt of gratitude. Our final speaker before we go to questions is the mayor of New Rochelle, Noam Bramson. Uh, Noam and I have been friends for a long, long time. We've had other positions and uh, other responsibilities working together in, in his role as the chief executive of, uh, of New Rochelle and in my role here in Westchester County. We have lots of issues that, that link us in the same way that it does with Mayor Spano and Yonkers and Mayor Roach here in White Plains and the village and the town officials. And we're very, very conscious of trying to form the right kind of partnership here in the county government with local government because in essence we are all subordinate governments under the structure of the state government. And, and rather than put us at counterpoint and odds, we try to find ways to be helpful to each other. Mayor Bramson and the members of the city council and the professional staff led by uh, uh, Chuck Strom have been nothing but helpful in this process. We turn to them any number of times to say, can you help us get over this particular hump or that particular hump? And uh, Noam and his team, Chuck and his team were there to be a partner with us. So uh, the mayor of the city, which will house this facility, I am sure he will be around in 30 years to see it in full fruition. <laughs> mayor Bramson. Thank you, George. I better start eating better in order to make sure that George's <laughs> promise uh, actually comes to pass. Uh, as uh, Mo Udall once said when he was the seventh or eighth speaker at an event, everything has been said, but not everyone has said it. Um, uh, even so, I guess someone must speak on behalf of the city of New Rochelle, on behalf of uh, a bipartisan, unanimous uh, city council, which was very supportive uh, of this effort. But because the landscape has already been covered so well by my colleagues, I can at least do you the favor of being quite brief. Uh, and just emphasize uh, three points. Uh, first, this is a terrific example of collaboration. Uh, collaboration among different levels of government and collaboration between the public and the private sector. And I think it does illustrate that there is an enormous amount that we can accomplish when we work together in a constructive fashion. And what a terrific counterpoint it is to the dynamic that we see in our nation's capital today where no one seems to be able to get along on anything that all of us have been able to work together, Democrats and Republicans, different levels of government to deliver a product that all of the people of our region will really care about. So hats off to all of my colleagues for demonstrating that uh, wonderful example. Secondly, 
I'm glad that both Joe and George uh, credited the city manager and our development commissioner because the speed with which we were able to process the application for this facility uh, is a credit to the downtown development framework that was adopted in New Rochelle a couple of years ago. Uh, we are accustomed to thinking of that as a means of facilitating a private development, housing, commercial development, but this is a great example of how it is also essential in terms of providing public facilities. And we've also recognized and always recognized that for a downtown area, for any community of any kind to be successful, it's got to have the full spectrum of services and facilities that uh, make it possible for people to lead their lives in, in their totality. And finally, just following up on the way George framed this issue initially, he talked about this being part of the county's effort to sort of deal with the unfinished business of the last few years and, and move us forward. I think that's very, very important to keep in mind. And I think it's equally important to keep in mind, and George referenced this too, that it's not just a matter of looking back and checking off boxes. It's a matter of looking to the future. We all know that there were other options that might have been easier in the short term, and yet they would not have served us as well. And it is uh, enormously impressive that George and the county legislature and the entire team took a far-sighted view and said, let's do something that may be a little bit more complicated, that will involve a little bit more brain damage for John and, and his entire team, uh, that will require a little bit more scrutiny. But ultimately, will provide these essential services in a central location, proximate to population centers, easily accessible by mass transit. Because as the judge said, it's all about how we serve the families of our community and region, especially those in crisis situations facing the most difficult circumstances, and making sure that their interests are upheld to the greatest degree possible. That is what you have all achieved. And on behalf of the city of New Rochelle, I say thank you. So at long last, we open it up to questions from the press. Tony? What's the cost difference between renovating the grocery store and doing this deal with your friend, Mr. Simone? Uh, it's a more expensive process to build new construction, whether it's with your friend or with anybody else. Uh, if we had gone into an existing facility, it would have been less expensive. But we would be dealing with an existing structure that had, uh, had to be accommodated, and, and the OCA design would have to be shaped around a physical plant as opposed to creating from scratch with a, a blank palette uh, the court that uh, will best meet the needs. And I think uh, Judge Davidson and her team has been very insistent on making sure that whatever we do, if it's going to last for 30 years, that it lasts well. Uh, the difference uh, over the course of time, uh, whenever you have uh, a new construction project and we're going in as, the, the, in essence, the first 10 of the new construction project, uh, I think it puts us in the $50 million range in terms of the total lease payments over the course of 30 years. Uh, it would have been somewhat less had we used the other alternatives, but I think the mayor pointed out there were problems with uh, one or both of the other potential alternatives, and one of the other potential alternatives, there was not a willing uh, landlord willing to negotiate with us to uh, get things together. You want to follow up, Tony? Yes, if I may. There are 62 counties in New York State. One county has more than one family court facility, and that's Westchester, which has three. Queens County, 2.3 million people, one family court. Brooklyn, Kings County, almost 3 million people, one family court. Are you missing an opportunity to rethink family court in Westchester County, especially given how much technology they've stuffed into the courthouse in Yonkers, where people can do teleconferencing? And why is Westchester uniquely in need of more than one family court situ uh, facility when every other county in New York has one? Well, if you look at all the counties of Westchester uh, in New York State, Tony, what you'll see in most of the counties outside of New York City is uh, a singular large city, which is the most logical place to have your court. In, in Monroe County, Rochester is the overarching city. In Erie County, Buffalo is the overarching city. In Onondaga, Syracuse is the overarching city. We in Westchester have six cities, and four of them are of significant nature and size. White Plains centrally located and the county seat, but the city of Yonkers at 200,000 people, fourth largest, probably soon to be the third largest city, sitting in a corner of the county, and uh, the city of Mount Vernon, a, uh, a, the, the densest population, sitting in a different location, the city of New Rochelle, roughly 80,000 people. So I don't think you have an analogous situation when you compare those counties to Westchester County. The New York City judicial system is a completely different structured city than the courts outside of New York City. The judge may want to address that if she chooses to. But the bottom line is there is one set of rules that apply to the city and another set of rules that apply outside of the city. And when we compare Westchester County, its concentration of population, 
how those cities are structured, the population that uses the family court in Westchester County, the unique nature of having a regionalized court makes sense in Westchester. It would not necessarily be the same uh, in Onondaga or Monroe County. Judge, do you want to also address that? Hang on just one second. Let, let the judge address it, then you can follow up. Sure, thank you for that question. I think that, if anything, um, Westchester County is really forward thinking. And if you think about ways to uh, address issues like the disproportionate number of children that come into the criminal justice system or juvenile justice system, and studies show that if you allow a child to go to school, and after the child goes to school and come to court, that can change the life of a child. So when you look at it, what I'm saying is you have many of youth that come to court, whether on PINS petition, juvenile delinquency petitions. What this allows us to do is to have our children go to school, we're in contact with the school system, have them come out after school and come before the judge. That saves a week out of school, a day out of school, especially particularly the children that we serve as a lifetime can change their life. So it's much more forward thinking. In addition, in the city, you have all the transportation. That makes a difference. I actually practice in Bronx County. I started off in Bronx County representing children. I can tell you the long lines, although they've gotten better. I don't want to talk about my, uh, my sister judges, but the fact that a family can come to court, the same kind of service you get in a Supreme Court. I have a specific court time, I come to court, I'm able to come to court and leave. When you have these long waits of waiting, you're talking about people can take their time off from work. They may be able to get a short period of time. Having a, region, having a court system right in their hometown where they can come, take off a couple hours and come back may make the difference between having a job and not having a job. So if anything, I would say it continues a vision that, that many of us don't embrace, but when you've worked it, as I've worked it from the Bronx County representing to representing parents all the way up, saying to me, I can't, I can't come to court, I can't keep coming, I have to take a whole day off. So if anything, that addresses the need, and specifically the needs of the community that we serve in family court. Tony, we'll give you one more follow-up before we go to the next person. Uh, okay, I, I have a two-part question. <laughs> <laughs> as long as your colleagues are fine with it, we'll, we'll go with it. Right. Well, look, again, with every geography, you make decisions based on the size and the scope of the county. If you look at Nassau County, Nassau County is a much more compact geography than we are. They're a bigger county in terms of uh, population and square area, but if you go right dead into the center of the county, you have a different accessibility from each corner of the county. Westchester is thinner and longer from north to south. And as I've said to you before, I think that the regionalization is the right way to go, and I think what we're missing is a, is a court in northern Westchester that would serve that population. So if, if, if there's a disagreement with those people that uh, agree either with your premise as you proposed, I don't know if you personally think that that's the right strategy, I would argue very aggressively that I think a regionalized court system is the right way to go. Uh, it is not for a county government to make those decisions, but I support the Office of Court Administration in supporting this. At any point in time, if uh, we were instructed to do it differently, we would have, but I think we, uh, we took our instructions and we agreed with them, and we believe that the regional structure, uh, the regional structure made sense. Final follow-up, Tony. Well, having discussed with sources in OCA, there's yeah. nothing that mandates that Westchester County do this. It's a choice. So there is that. Um, uh, well, we could discuss that in some greater detail. Uh, we, we, were, we, were, we had a discussion about making sure. I'm sorry? Lobbying by Nick Spano on behalf of this project, did it play a role? Uh, Nick Spano uh, was involved in representing uh, some of the individuals in the development uh, team, and uh, he was a liaison in our discussions uh, that was helpful to us in the process. We did not contract with him for that purpose. Uh, we, we interacted with him as part of the process. We also interacted directly with uh, the individuals in the development team as well. Thank you. Okay, other questions? All right. I'm going to have to defer to the development team to describe the parcel and how you pieced it together. Mark Stagg? Yes. Hi, uh, Mark Stagg. Uh, this was just a uh, as-of-right site. Uh, the city of New Rochelle is blossoming and activity everywhere, and we thought it was a site. Uh, I'm a residential developer by trade, and we, it was just the, the right site at the right time. And, uh, and then it evolved. It evolved with an inkling. Somebody told me the county has a need. Um, I thought it was... Uh, more pie in the sky, you know, it will it ever get done? It, a different committee, as everyone discussed before, um, the lengthy process from the court system started with there, with the county legislators to go through there. So it just kind of evolved. And, uh, and it was the right site at the right time. And, you know, next to transportation, like everybody said. So were the current tenants there to pass the lead to, I mean, the domain, 
No, 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 not at all. It was sellers that the land was up for sale and we acquired the land through a traditional uh, sale. My, understand, my understanding, Michelle, as well, is that the, the, there are fairly small parcels and no one of them could have been developed into a significantly profitable use. It made more sense, I gather, and I'm extrapolating from what I've seen in the map, Mark, Joe, that uh, the individuals who had the smaller slices were better off uh, making their profit by selling for a larger use of the property rather than trying to segment them. How they were segmented originally, we'll ask our friends in the title search business to give us the information on that. Any follow-up? Yeah, no, let me, let me let Michelle have a follow-up, and then we'll go to Allie. Well, actually, I have a question for the judge. Okay. You Your Honor? Um, judges like questions. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how old the current building is, and what do you like least about it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know how old it, it is in a report. I know when I started practicing over 30 years, I was in that court, as a matter of fact. Um, well, everything, it doesn't serve, you know, if there are many com what we call community courts, and we want the court to really reach the community and address the community. So it's, and I'm very thankful that the, let me just say, the landlord is allowing us to stay there um, while there's other project. But you want a court that meets the needs of your community. So say by the county legislature, you're able to have the office of women. Um, in family court tradition, that's where we have our temporary orders of protections domestic violence. So you not only are you able to come before the court, but you also have the resources that family need, needs. So they can go to the Office of Women, find help, get help, go to the Office of Probation. So all those things are not possible at that particular site. They're possible at this site, and they're not only possible, they will be at this particular site. And begin to see that the community, so it's, it's not community-based. At the time, I'm sure it was a great idea, but our vision the needs have as, as we do more research research on the courts and what's needed for the families and the communities we need that we need to have a more holistic approach and this is what this court provides for us a much more holistic approach many courts have places where the kids are waiting to come before the judge the youth they might have computers set up they may have needs you can meet the needs there we may be looking to have tutors there for them many of our youth that come into our court are in desperate need of additional services in, front, in terms of educational needs. So I'm saying all that say it's not so much what's wrong with the other court, it's what's more what we write about this court. It's a holistic approach. So we shouldn't just have holistic approaches in preventive medicine, we should have preventive law. And those are the kind of initiatives, that's the excellent initiatives of Chief Stanley Di Fiore. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Ellie? Well, uh, the, the actual project, uh, again, I'll let uh, the developers discuss it. Uh, with the closure of the lease, we believe that we've been told that the construction time frame is two years or slightly less than that. They can speak to it in some detail. Our commitment to the current location that we're in was a two-year extension that will expire June 30th of 2021. So we would hope that we would be substantially completed uh, with the construction so that we could open the court sufficient time. If we do need some additional time in our current location, we will, we will ask for that. But, uh, you know, I think uh, the current owner of the current building would expect to see a building that's almost ready to open uh, come 2021. Now, there can always be some unforeseen realities in construction, and so no one, you know, is going to predict w with absolute specificity. But uh, I think the intent is that this will be a two-year, slightly less than two-year process, and uh, that the court will be open in 2021 uh, and will have the, uh, the, the transition occur, whatever that uh, structure looks like and uh, it'll be operated uh, by, I'll say, mid-2021. Either of you gentlemen want to comment on that, Joe, please? The uh, STAG group is primarily a residential developer. Um, the Simone organization is primarily a commercial developer. So uh, the STAG group, Mark Fonte and Mark Stag, had this in the works for a very long time. So Tony, for your edification, uh, we just jumped in relatively recently uh, into this project because of our commercial background. This is a very, very large site. It's almost an acre. This is going to be a mixed-use development. The family courthouse is only one small component of this. Uh, so uh, we intend to do quite a bit on this site. I mean, its location is fabulous i mean we're right across from the train station we're right off the highway it's got major exposure so there's a lot more to come so to answer your question on the cost i'm not prepared here to give you that number exactly right here today but it is only a small component of this project 
well, we're pretty bullish on health care. So I think you will see medical and health care on this site, and uh, you might uh, also see some residential as well. It will be a complete mixed-use project. When do you expect to go ground? As soon as we can. <laughs> <laughs> we better. <laughs> No. No, the courthouse, the family courthouse is the tail, it's not the dog. Any other questions for Joe? Any other questions at all from any of our other friends in the media? Then we'll, uh, uh, we'll uh, take the opportunity for you to interview each of these people individually as you see fit. And, uh, and then I will stay for a little bit in case there are other questions you want to ask. Let me just close this piece of it off by saying that uh, you've seen a lot of different people with different expertise here that has gone into where we are today. We've got a long way to go before this thing opens uh, as a family court, but uh, through all of the different expertise that, that is here, the most important thing is that each of us in our own way is doing our job. Nothing more, but nothing less. And sometimes in government, that's a lot, that you can actually accomplish the things you say you will. So thank you. Uh, any of you folks want to be interviewed, feel free.